Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Murphy. I'm a PhD candidate in Management Information Systems and I am here to talk to you today about uh, what you see sort of unfolding behind me. It's not some sort of biochemical um, project, it's actually a time lapse of the connections in my personal notes forming over time. Uh, and I think it shows how important notes might be in our lives and how if we start to think of them as this big integrated whole as an information system, we might be able to take better notes. So I'm going to just dive right in. Um, the title of my talk is Your Notes Are an Information System, Lessons from Information Systems for Personal Knowledge Management. And these are two fields that I'm trying to bring together in um, what is really today a research sketch of a uh, stream of research that I'm hoping to build over the next few years. So if you want to fall asleep like my little greyhound here, um, I just want to begin by summarizing all the key takeaways for you. Um, so first of all, you probably take notes uh, you might not think of everything you take um, as notes, but I'm going to define a few different types of notes and you'll see how we really use note taking a lot in our lives. These notes probably contain unstructured or uh, semi-structured data about your world. And because they're data, your notes and how you write them form an information system. And therefore, we can actually use theory from information systems to inform note taking practice and we might be able to learn from note taking in order to inform IS theory. And this has implications for improving note system quality. So I, a quick aside, one of the inspirations for this are an emerging set of tools called, I'm calling integrated thinking environments. And that's, um, for instance, like Obsidian here. Uh, and this is actually what I use. And integrated thinking environments are tools that help us navigate, organize, transform our notes, and extend our note systems into very specific use cases that are really personal to us. It's a really cool set of tool technologies that are starting to show up lately. Um, and that's kind of the inspiration for this talk. I'm really curious about the theory behind these tools and how, uh, and the users who use them and how they might um, do better. And so um, you probably take notes. Let's start with that very first premise. Um, if we look at the def di dictionary definition of notes, uh, this is from Wiktionary, an online dictionary. Um, most people think of notes probably as this second definition here, which is a written or printed communication. Um, and we probably have been taking notes for a long, long time, although it was harder to uh, take notes when we were chiseling them into stone. Um, but uh, a note forms, or there are a variety of forms of notes in our lives. One might be um, a piece of writing intended to assist the memory. And so what you see in front of me or behind me here is a um, note from my computer science courses uh, in my undergrad a long time ago. Um, a note also might help us um, think, might help us break down a variety of complex topics and ideas, as you see in these canvases that are stretched out in a warehouse here um, for strategy design. A note might also be a diplomatic missive, a piece of communication. Uh, this is a little post-it that was on a form that somebody gave me once with uh, the subtitle extras in case he screws up, which I thought was quite diplomatic. A note might also include a list of items or might be a list of items like this grocery list I found on the floor of a grocery store one day. Everything scratched out so the person must have accomplished their goals. Um, a note might also be an annotation like uh, the way my grandmother and my nan sketched up her uh, recipe book here. Or it might be a correction like uh, stakeholders did to this diagram I was working on a number of years ago. Um, or a note might be uh, a written paper acknowledging a debt, which I thought was the best way of describing a to-do list that I've ever read. Um, like the to-do list you see behind me for a big paper I was working on once. And so you probably have taken notes like these uh, in your life. Uh, and the cool thing about all of those notes that you've ever taken is that they actually contain unstructured or semi-structured data about your world. That's right, data. Um, conventionally, we think of data as this structured, usually quantitative, highly labeled or fit to a schema thing that fits inside a database. Notes, on the other hand, are actually unstructured or semi-structured data. Um, they're descriptive, they're contextual, we can tell what they are by where they are or how they're organized. Um, and they might be thought of as thick or personalized qualitative information about, about the world. Um, and because your notes are data, um, we can actually think of them as an information system. According to Antonio, Antony Olive, an information system is something that maintains a representation of the state of a given domain. It provides information about the state of that domain, and it helps you perform actions that actually can change that domain and the state of it's in. Your notes, similarly, describe or detail something about your world. They let you query that th something so you can understand it after the fact um, or use that information later on. And therefore, they notes aid your planning and decision making, they support your memory, and they help you think. They help you perform actions that affect your world. And so I argue here that your notes are an information system. And so let's bring this together. 
if our notes are information systems. We can use theory from information systems to inform the design and use of our notes and our note systems. Let me restate that. Um, if our notes actually create these information systems, then we can draw on the huge um, literature and the huge amount of scholarship that's been done in information systems in order to inform how we use notes and how we make them. And that might be uh, really good for all of the purposes that I've already talked about. So if we're going to use IS theory, um, let's just look at a couple of examples. And these are the, the early findings, I guess, in, in this research sketch that I'm sharing with you today. The first of those is drawing on conceptual modeling. A conceptual model describes the ontology of a domain, the nature and structure of reality in that domain. That is, what types of things exist, what are they composed of, what do they do, and how do they relate to one another. So in a note system, you might think of a conceptual model as describing the metadata, the classifications, and the links, and the structures, and the content of your notes. What exactly are your notes? What are they of? What are they supposed to represent? What are they for? And so on. Have you thought about what a conceptual model, what your conceptual model is for your school notes, say, or for the recipe books that you keep around? Probably not. Well, what happens if we actually try this, if we actually apply the ideas from conceptual modeling to our note systems? To do that, I'm looking at some research from Wan and Wang in 2006. Um, they had these four dimensions, intrinsic dimensions, of data quality. They looked at the ontology of data, or of information systems, I'm going to move myself a little bit, um, and they thought of these four different areas of, uh, that are intrinsic dimensions of data quality. The idea here is that you can think about your conceptual model as whether or not it accounts for these four dimensions, and then if you do that, maybe you'll understand a bit more about how to improve data quality intrinsically um, in what you're trying to represent in your information system. So um, just to walk through these four different categories very briefly, um, Completeness is whether or not you can represent all salient real-world information um, phenomena in the information system you're trying to use. Um, meaningfulness is whether or not all possible states of um, the information system actually map back to valid real-world states. That is, they're not, coming at, they're not creating something that is artificial or would never actually exist. Unambiguity means all possible states in the system actually correspond with specific real-world states. That is, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the things that you can represent in your information system and the things that actually exist in the real world. And then finally, correctness is whether or not the things that you've stored or represented in your information system actually map back to the right, the correct, the appropriate real world state. So if we look at these four ideas and we apply them to three different categories of note taking, um, what might we learn? That's what I do here. So first, let's dive into the idea of notes for studying, um, an area of knowledge. If we apply these four ideas, uh, first of all, I'll show you that this bottom area here, entered data and metadata does not contain errors of commission or om omission. That's how I've sort of defined correctness across the board. No matter what, correctness is whether or not you've entered information correctly or, or accurately. So I'm going to leave that one alone. But for the other three categories, if we look at an in an er notes on an area of knowledge, and we think about completeness, you might actually realize that it's important to capture whether or not you are um, memorizing or you understand the concepts that you're taking notes about um, as part of the note itself. So if you're studying flashcards, for instance, you really should try and track which flashcards you deeply understand and which ones you're still working on. And that will be a valuable um, insight when you're actually using those notes to understand that area. Similarly, it might be a terrible idea for meaningfulness to just copy or import somebody else's notes or say a textbook into your note system um, straight one-to-one. Um, -one. That's because those ideas, those um, notes that you're importing, somebody else's notes, aren't yours. They might not mean anything to you. And so they might actually reduce the quality of the notes that you've captured if you're just importing somebody else's. Um, and so the third area here, unambiguity, um, my insight here was that you might want to capture whether or not you, uh, information you're, you're taking note of in your studies is conflicting or questioned, or if it's a cold hard fact that you can trust completely. And that, that's because this reduces ambiguity about whether or not the insight that you're capturing can be explored further or should be studied further. Um, if you capture everything as if it's completely trustworthy, then it introduces this ambiguity into the system and you might later trust it less. Let's look at another area, task and project management. When I looked at these four categories, one particularly interesting thing is the idea that you probably shouldn't capture non-tasks in a project management or task management um, list. And that may be obvious, and yet in my own work, I've often captured ideas or plans that I wasn't actually ready to execute on in these task lists. 
And that reduced their meaningfulness. That reduced the utility um, of the task list because it contained a bunch of things that weren't actually tasks. And so it, this is a, an idea from uh, the intrinsic data quality dimension of meaningfulness. Make sure that what you capture in your task management system is actually a task. It's not something that you're just sort of ideating about. And then the third area that I looked at here was recipes in a, a recipe book or a recipe collection. And if you look at these three areas, I had uh, three sort of interesting insights. Um, the first is that you might want to really reflect on why you're capturing recipes. Sure, it might just be to be able to help you make the recipe later on, but maybe you also want to reflect on it. Maybe you want to know what kind of food you like the most, or maybe you want to track what nutrition. Uh, if you're not capturing that kind of information in your recipe book, then it's less useful later on for those possible uses, those unanticipated or maybe um, unexpected uses that could be really valuable later on. The second insight here is that um, you want to make sure that you're capturing instructions in your recipes in sufficient granularity in order to maintain meaningfulness. Uh, for instance, if you're making a chimichurri sauce with a steak recipe you're making, then you can't just write two tablespoons of chimichurri, because what if you make it differently the next time? So you want to actually make sure you capture the, de the data, the uh, instructions of how to make this recipe in enough granularity that you can break it down in the future and make it the same way. And this is the same um, or a similar point as this third area here. To make sure your recipes are unambiguous, you want to write them out such that the same result occurs every time. If, say, there's some technique that is very important to get right for exactly um, for making the recipe exactly right, maybe writing it out is a terrible idea. Maybe you actually want to um, capture the uh, technique with a video or something so that you can see how to do it the next time. Um, otherwise, the recipe might not, not actually be able to track one to one with the recipe you're trying or the food you make every single time. And so that's one sort of finding. This is an early idea. Um, and the, these things might have um, room for improvement. These ideas might have room for improvement, but you can see hopefully how applying ideas from information systems is a good way of reflecting on and challenging how we take notes and how we structure our notes. So just another example, and I haven't gone further, uh, uh, very far in detail on this one yet, is Mahanti's 2019 list of dimensions of data quality. She captured quite a few here. I know it's too small to read, um, but I've extracted some that seem particularly important for note taking. And I want to, in the future, ask this question. What do these data quality measures mean for note systems? And how do note takers themselves actually evaluate and think about and design for them? Issues like accessibility, how easy it is to query and find information in your notes, or data coverage, whether or not your notes actually capture the full extent of the world you're trying to capture. Um, do note takers think about these things? And if not, what if they did? What would that mean for uh, the quality of notes that they're, they're capturing? And so hopefully you're starting to see how in these lessons from information systems actually have implications for improving node system quality. And that leads us to this sort of final question that I'm hoping to build out as part of this research stream. How might we design our node systems to be the most effective? Um, and the first question that we have to ask is for what? Different goals might actually lead to different sort of um, optimizations. Are we trying to take notes to have ideas? Are we trying to take notes to study and retain uh, material? Or are we trying to reference, to create reference lists like task lists or recipes? Um, how we answer the question for what will change the conceptual model and the, the things that we prioritize when we're capturing notes and when we're trying to use them later on. And then there's these other questions of um, the granularity or at atomicity of notes, how small each note is as an individual unit and how we build those things together in structures in order to, those notes together in structures in order to make them a bigger whole. Similarly, I've got questions, I think we can ask questions about how cognitive load works when we're interacting with our notes and how different approaches to note taking and note using um, affects uh, cognitive load and how we organize and classify notes. So it, to, to wrap up here so we can rest again like my little greyhound, um, the real question here is what lessons might we learn from information systems? I'm hoping to pursue this as a kind of theoretical um, study in the, in the near future. And then in the far future, I'm hoping to actually study note takers. I think we can build a distributed lab using the integrated thinking environments that I talked about before, letting people contribute data and let, running quasi experiments with the kinds of principles people use when they take notes and use notes to see if there are different effects on the quality of notes and the, the uses of them. So with that, I will um, draw my talk to a close. Hopefully you at least are going to look back at your notes and think about these issues uh, as they affect you. Um, and I'm looking forward to all of the questions. Thanks so much for watching.